How's it going everyone? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, we're going to be going over which Hondas, in my opinion, have the best chance of reaching 200,000 miles with the least amount of issues headed to that point or getting to that point. So I'm actually going to go in reverse order and start with the worst and then finish at the top one, which would be the one with the least amount of issues and expenses to get to that 200,000 mile goal. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so at the bottom of the list, we have the Prologue. Yes, I know it is a GM product, but it is sold by Honda and we are servicing them. And by servicing them, I mean repairing them because we have had a couple of them with failures already. A couple of them have had battery packs replaced, not at my dealer, but I have a huge network of uh, technicians and a couple of them have been replaced across the country. So not a good start, but it could be just first year bugs as we see in many of these vehicles. But long story short is I do not foresee these vehicles reaching 200,000 miles without a major expense and headache. So for that reason alone, it's going to be at the bottom of the list for me. All right, so next up is the CRV. These are the trims with the 1.5 a turbocharged engine in them. So as you know, uh, we are doing a ton of head gaskets on all 1.5 Ts on all the previous generations. Now, these newer generations are only a few years old and a little bit premature to be having head gasket failures, even though the other ones are also having those failures. So a little too soon to tell, but I have a dedicated video on this subject. If you wanna check it out, I have a description section down below on why I think these issues will continue with the blown head gaskets onto the new um, models. Now, uh, if that happens, of course, I'll update you guys. If not, then I'll update you guys anyways. But uh, for that reason alone, I'm going to put the CRV 1.5T here. So we have concerns of obviously head gaskets potentially going way before 200,000 miles turbocharger failures. We see catalytic converter failures. We see sometimes injector failures. So a lot of that's contributed to that GDI setup, um, you know, and a lot of it's also um, lack of maintenance, but it all comes in a package and I'm generalizing here everything as a general consumer uses these vehicles. So 200,000 miles would be way out of warranty. So I don't foresee it again there without major issues. So that's my opinion on that one. All right, moving on. So we have the, the Accord 1.5T. So the same scenario, the only reason I put the Accord above the CRV is because the Accord just has less moving uh, parts and uh, no all wheel drive system. Although the CRV, you could get both all wheel drive and two wheel drive, but you know, something could happen with there as well. Something with the drive shaft, the bearings, you know, whatever. Um, but the Accord just has less moving parts. Uh, I foresee it being a little bit less expensive to get to that 200,000 mile mark. I still think it'll have turbocharger issues, head gasket issues, and this may not happen to all of them, but it is happening to an alarming amount of vehicles with these 1.5 turbocharged engines. And again, this is my opinion on this stuff. So uh, just be open-minded here, and I will update you guys as we progress through these uh, years and we move forward uh, to see if these issues do continue or not. So uh, for that reason, I'm putting the Accord right above the CRV. Right, so moving on, we have the Civic Si, which once again, does also have the 1.5 turbocharged engine. Now, um, we don't see too many blown head gaskets with these, and I think some of that is attributed to that um, you know, people that get these cars typically uh, use higher uh, octane fuel and are more maintenance um, ready, maintenance prone, and do maintain their vehicles a little bit better than your average consumer. So for that reason, I think that they kind of stay together for a little bit longer, but eventually they do end up blown as well. If you want the forums, I've done a couple myself. Uh, they are blown out there left and right. Uh, on the 10th generation Civic. So um, we will have to see how that plays out into the, the 11th generation Civics. I'm sure they may be a case there, uh, or, but I haven't done any head gaskets on those myself or heard anything from fellow technicians. So I will reserve my uh, you know opinions on that until I do see that happening. But um, you know, less moving parts, a lot less of these vehicles out on the road. Uh, although enthusiasts do like to modify these cars and that kind of 
you know, contradicts everything else. So once you start modifying these cars, uh, everything that Honda kind of designed the uh, engine around uh, goes out the door. Once you're pushing everything past its limits, um, you know, it just kind of uh, doesn't really apply to normal uh, application that Honda intended the use of these engines. So um, that would be one of the reasons that it would be uh, more prone to blown a little bit earlier versus somebody who keeps it stock, which not a lot of people uh, keep these cars uh, stock or you know unmodified if whatever you want to call it so uh, i think this is a good spot for the civic si i do like it um think it's still a little bit underpowered uh honda should have bumped up the power a little bit um but you know it is what it is maybe they've reserved the power increases because they are seeing some of these issues who knows um they have the reasons and maybe just competitive where it is i'm not sure but I think the aside sli uh, slots right above the uh, Accord uh, 1.5 T here. All right, so right above that, we have the uh, Pilot. So the Pilot came out in 2023, 10-speed transmission, love the transmission. We've only had one issue with the transmission, which is a great sign. Those transmissions have been in various vehicles before it even got to this one. So uh, one issue, not a big deal. I'm not worried about that. What I am worried about is uh, some uh, cases of oil leaks so it could just be a couple of years first year second year uh, you know bugs that need to be worked out although um you know generally speaking these j series are super solid what concerns me is that there is a quad cams quad vtc so there's a lot of moving parts we will kind of have to see how they hold up over time and you know we have all dry system we see leaks in between the um transfer case and the transmission on the older ones so it's very possible that they continue onto these so um you know a lot of moving parts these cars require a lot of maintenance you know again a lot of moving parts the time belt package is going to be expensive now in the shop side we do everything on a flat rate system at the dealer so for the old timing belts we're getting six hours to do those now these are probably gonna have to go up at least two hours i would say we have adjustable or variable cam gears right so you have to hold everything uh, just to time it there's a special tool it's going to be a long process uh, it's going to take a lot longer than the normal single cam j series did before then so labor time is definitely going to have to go up a little bit and um you know uh, stuff like that so uh for that reason i'm putting this uh, car right above here i do love it i love the idea of it um, but you know, a lot of moving parts equals uh, more maintenance and stuff. And as these cars gain technology and stuff, that's everything that we had to, con you know, contribute into the ownership or take into the consideration, right? You got panel roofs, you got uh, all these infotainments, these large screens and stuff like that. If one of those screens or one of those panel roof breaks, that's a huge, uh, you know, um, expense that can be added to maybe unexpectedly. So just something we have to consider here as a whole package, but I love the vehicle. I would definitely consider one for me, but considering what we have, and it's still a little bit early to tell on these engines if those VTC gears um, are gonna be an issue. Anytime you have a um, essentially oil feeding and mechanical gear, um, that's an area that we have to keep an eye on for like leaks and stuff like that. Uh, we'll see how they uh, you know hold up over time but for that reason i am going to put the pilot right in here all right so above the pilot's going to be the passport slash ridge line they're essentially the same type of vehicle just wants to pick up one's enclosed cargo uh space but um great vehicles i do like both of them uh, i know people are going to have complaints and maybe some people have great experiences on them but you know there's always two sides to every story here and generally speaking we do not see too many issues with them i think they're overall great cars both desperately need a redesign here but as far as maintenance goes you got front transfer case you got rear diff you got time belt package you got you know spark plugs that applies to all vehicles but everything has to come into consideration at uh, this point i think they have a great chance of easily reaching 200,000 miles without major um you know um surprises i guess we could call it but the expenses are still there so for that reason i'm putting these vehicles right here all right so the next vehicle we have is the odyssey so i am generally surprised at how few issues we see with them so um, when Honda started with these vans, uh, the first generation was regular doors, and then they went to uh, sliding doors with the second generation. They were absolutely a disaster. That transferred into the third generation. By the fourth generation, they seemed to be kind of figuring it out. And now by this generation, 
Uh, we don't see too many issues with these sliding doors at all, which is great. There was a couple recalls when it first came out, but as far as the doors actually failing, uh, I can't remember the last time I uh, diagnosed one for a failed, uh, you know, part. So not saying that that is, it doesn't happen, but uh, it can. Uh, but we don't see too many of them. So um, I think it's a great car, um, you know, great power. It's, you know, obviously not something I would get for me because not my type of vehicle, but they are presently, uh, you know, surprisingly good to drive. So we don't see too many issues with them. Transmissions uh, seem to be per doing pretty good. We're going to get a case here and there. Um, again, you got the V6 with the tie-in belt. Uh, just an expense you're going to have to do at 105,000 miles or seven years. Whatever comes first, that applies to any tie-in belt. No rear differential, no transfer case leaks we have to worry about. So for that reason, I'm putting that vehicle here. So the next car here is a Civic Type R. And now these are turbocharged. They are 2 liter great engine great transmission we do see a couple gear grinds from here and there a couple burn clutches but that's typically because of driver error or abuse but nonetheless it still happens so i'm gonna place this car here truly a great drive the previous generation had 20 inch wheels we saw plenty of bent wheels and blown out tires on the current generation honda downsized to a 19 inch wheel which has been great for street driving and much much better we don't see what we used to see on a 10th uh, 10 generation so being that it is turbocharged, chances are at one point it'll probably blow the head gasket and that will be an added cost to the vehicle ownership. So for that reason, I will put it here. All right, so next we have the CRV Hybrid. So uh, these are great vehicles. We did have a couple of issues with injectors initially when it came out. That kind of seems to have slowed down. If you're a Honda Tech and you're still seeing them, make sure you drop a comment down below. But um, as if we're going anything off the previous generation, we don't see too many issues with them, which is great. You know, we see uh, plenty of them already with 200,000 miles on the previous generation. So I think that will most definitely continue onto this generation. And the power is great. Fuel economy is great. It is a little bit more expensive than the normal trim 1.5T, but I think it's well worth the investment of getting the hybrid Everything points in the right direction on a hybrid and not so much on that 1.5T. I think it's a great vehicle and, you know, you do have some added, um, added maintenance costs with rear differential. That's probably the only thing you have over like an Accord and a Civic that will be mentioned in a couple of segments from now. But uh, yeah, I think it's a great vehicle. It'll definitely be reliable and I have no doubts in my mind that most of them will reach that milestone without major repairs. All right, so next we have the Accord Hybrid. So the only reason the Accord is above the CRV is just because simply it doesn't have a di rear differential. So less wear, less failure points, less maintenance you have to do. Uh, but CRV and the uh, Civic and the, the Accord could easily be flip flopped here in any particular order. But the CRV will just be right underneath the Accord just due to the fact that it has a rear differential and just a little bit more maintenance required here. But Accord Hybrid, great car. Get that over to 1.5T. Once again, worth the extra money up front. All right, so almost at the top of the list here, we're going to put the Civic Hybrid. And this is a great car. I definitely considered purchasing one for myself as a daily driver. And I may still do so. Great power band, great fuel economy, proven power plant, with the exception of maybe some felt injectors. We haven't seen in yet, but same engine, I believe, as the CRV um, Hybrid that we have currently. So... Besides that injector stuff, we really haven't seen too many issues. So hopefully it stays that way. And again, no injector failures yet on the actual Civic. And again, hopefully it stays that way. With general maintenance, I have no uh, reason believing that this car can't reach 200,000 miles fairly easily and fairly uh, inexpensively. So I'll put this vehicle right over here underneath that first slot. All right, and at the top of the list, we are going to put the HRV. Now, these cars are port injected and non turbocharged engines. So, this is the last of its kind in the Honda lineup. So, for that reason, it is going at the top of the list. Great car. The only pet peeve I have about it, it is underpowered. But you know what? Reliability is well worth it in this vehicle even at 20 horsepower or so short of it making it a perfect car in my opinion for most scenarios obviously if you have a family it could get a little bit small but great vehicle uh, uh, offered in two-wheel drive four-wheel drive so if it's four-wheel drive rear differential service may have some component failures along the line but 
overall probably the most affordable vehicle to own here as a buying starting point and overall maintenance uh, of the car's life so that being said hopefully this video was informative to a lot of people out there hopefully it makes you make a decision on your next purchase of your honda if you would flip flop any of the cars in any particular order drop a comment down below and we could discuss that being said i'll catch everyone on the next one